What happens if the ERISA denial letter tells the policyholder the wrong deadline in which to file a lawsuit? Did you know that once you exhaust your administrative remedies by filing all the appeals that are required in your ERISA disability claim, you can then go into federal court. But what happens if the uh, disability insurance company in the denial letter tells the policyholder the wrong deadline for filing the lawsuit? That's important because if you don't follow the deadlines, your lawsuit can be thrown out of uh, court on the basis that it's untimely, or in other words, the statute of limitations has run. Let's first talk about what generally uh, are the deadlines. Now the starting point for figuring that out is normally the language in the disability insurance policy because it will tell you um, what you have to do when your claim is denied, your rights to file an appeal, when you have to file the appeal, and when you have to file a lawsuit if that denial is upheld. Now I'm going to give you an example and it's found in the case of Hewitt versus Lincoln Financial. It's a bit convoluted, but stick with me because I think this is important for you to understand. The Lincoln policy provided that a claimant could not start any legal action more than three years after the time a proof of claim was required. Now, that isn't clear, but what's worse is the denial letter sent was even less clear. In fact, it was silent on the deadline. What the denial letter said was that Hewitt had the right to bring a civil action under Section 502A of the ERISA statute following an adverse decision. So what was the deadline? Let's do some timelining here, okay? The claim was filed in July of 2013 and it was denied at the end of 2013. He didn't file the lawsuit until December of 2018. Now clearly that's more than the three-year time limit in the policy. So of course, what did the disability carrier say? They said, this lawsuit is time barred. Court, throw it out. But Judge Lefko disagreed and said that it was the denial letter that was supposed to provide Hewitt with the information he needed so that he could timely pursue the denial of his claim. So this federal judge ruled that the ERISA regulations contemplated that the carrier's failure to provide Hewitt with the information they needed in the denial letter was per se prejudicial. And she applied the Illinois statute of limitations to this claim that was applicable to written contracts. So what are the lessons to be learned in a case when you get a denial letter? Well, the obvious lesson is that if the disability claim is denied, the policyholder should immediately hire an experienced ERISA disability attorney to file an appeal and to do so within 180 days of the denial as required by the ERISA statute. That's important because the appeal of the denial is the trial of an ERISA case. The next obvious lesson is that if the appeal is denied, you should immediately hire an experienced ERISA disability attorney to file a lawsuit, a lawsuit that is filed timely. You shouldn't be leaving it to chance that the lawsuit will be timely filed when you get around to it. The final lesson is that while Judge Lefko found that the statute of limitations didn't expire, that didn't necessarily mean that ultimately she will find that the denial was wrong. All this decision did was to keep Hewitt in court. Don't let a disability insurance carrier wrongly deny your benefits or even terminate your benefits. If you have a claim that's been denied, you'll only have 180 days in which to file an appeal. You cannot go to court without exhausting your administrative remedies. And because the appeal is a trial of your case, you don't want to do it yourself. When I write an appeal letter, I find 15 to 20 reasons why the carrier was wrong. I develop the necessary medical, vocational, lay evidence that addresses the reasons why the carrier is wrong. But I also write the legal argument to explain to the insurance company and potentially the court why legally the disability insurance carrier has made an error which should be reversed and why your benefits should be uh, awarded. I can help you get the disability benefits you deserve regardless of where you live in the United States. I practice across the United States handling ERISA disability matters. So call me today at 727-894-3188.
for a complimentary consultation. I'm not afraid of taking on any disability carrier. I like to get the disability benefits my clients deserve because I've been there. My dad became disabled when I was growing up and he took on the disability insurance company and got his disability benefits. So fighting disability carriers is in my blood. Call me today at 727-894-3188 for a complimentary consultation.